Well, today there is practically two ways to detect easily planets. Well, that's the two main ways that has been used to detect all these planets that we know. Um, the first one, that started 20 years ago, is using a technology which is called spectroscopy. So what we do here is we look at the star and we build a spectra. So the spectra is it's like a signature of the star. There's a lot of atoms on the atmosphere of the stars and there's a lot of feature on the spectra. It's like a rainbow. Um, what we try to detect here is a motion on the star. Because if there is a planet orbiting that star, the star will move. And we can use the spectra to detect that motion. So what's behind that is it's called the Doppler effect that connects a change of color with a change of speed. So when we change the speed of the star, you change a bit the color of the star. So you move a bit the spectra. It's something known since a long time. I mean, the spectroscopy, it's old stuff. It's known since about 100 years old. Um, the Doppler effect is even older. Um, so why have we waited so long to detect a planet then? Well, it's because the motion that you have to detect is extremely small. It, it is smaller that you practically can measure it. So it's a bit like you have a, you blind and you try to see better than the actual picture you get because you're blind. Um, and it requires a lot of strategy because any tiny change, like if you change the temperature, if you change the pressure, any tiny change will make a motion of your spectra bigger than what you try to detect. So recently what happened is we had a couple of technologies um, that we could benefit from. Well, the first one is computers. With computers come from come the detectors. We're using electronic detectors and these electronic detector used to be very small at the beginning and bigger and bigger. So you need a big detector to do spectroscopy because there's a lot of, of of, of spectra you want to record on it. So you need to have big detector. That started about in the end of the 80s. Well, a key discovery was something that came from the technology from the telecommunications is optical fibers. Optical fiber is a way to, to, to transmit light. You don't lose, you almost lose nothing. You just bring the light inside and it's like a highway for the light. And, and that was a dramatic change for us, because for a long time, astronomers used to be behind the telescope. Some of them used to always stay the whole night on the top of telescope, because that, the telescope is, is, is where you have the, 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 the star, when you observe the star, and, and whatever you want to record on the star has to be hanging on the telescope. So you have to be there. Having a fiber, you just, bring the fiber of the telescopes and you take the flux from the stars in the fiber, you move the fiber down and you can have your instrument down in the basement. That's a dramatic change because you don't have any more the instrument that you're using hanging around the telescope and moving. You can have a, something which is very stable, very quiet. And that's the trick. The fiber and the detector where the two main ingredients that just made the step. On the top of that, there's a lot of new mathematics that has been used to just compute the speed because of the tiny motion that you need to do. And there's a lot of tricks also to record any change in the spectrograph. So all these ingredients were new stuff that was invented a bit more than 20 years ago. And uh, that's what we did. That's what I did 20 years ago, is setting up a new machine based on these ingredients on a telescope in the south of France. The machine calls LOD, and that's with this spectrograph that we detected the first exoplanet on other stars. 
Well, since then, we have made an, a lot of progress. We're still using the same kind of technology, but we have way improved what we can do. Now we can measure tiny, tiny change. We measure better than a walking man. So really something very tiny at very far away. So this is really a kind of an achievement in terms of technology. So in 20 years, we have made tremendous progress in this technology. Um, we, at the beginning, we were barely able to detect a planet like Jupiter. And right now, we're detecting planet as small as the Earth, with the mass of the Earth. And it needs to be still close to the star. Um, so we're still limited to detect that kind of close by compact Earth system. We don't yet detect an Earth at the distance of the Earth, but we're working on that. And that's something that, that will soon be possible. The main parameter you extract from this technique is the period of the planet, then the distance between the planet and the star, and then the mass. Actually, we get the minimum mass, but very close to the mass of the planet. So what is interesting is to combine this with a completely different technique, which is called the transit. In this case, the planet goes in front of the star. Uh, and, and you can use this event to compute the size of the planet. Well, what practically you do, you get the ratio between the size of the stars and the size of the planet. It's a shadow, practically, going in front of the star. Um, and this, this is quite interesting because it's different from the mass. If you can get as well the mass of one of these transiting system, then the mass on the size gives you the density. And the density for a physicist is magic because it tells you what is the ingredient. If I found a density like the water, I will know that the kind of planet has a density of the water. It cannot be like the Earth. To be like the Earth, it has to be more dense. It has to be dense like silicate or rocks. So, so that's the interesting part of the game, is trying to combine different techniques together. So the transit has been uh, quite a dramatic um, uh, techniques to detect planet because it has been used in space. The first transit mission was the Koro mission. It has been used to find the first planet of rocky type, for which we're sure. Why? Because we get the size and we got the mass. And combining the two, we got the density. But then a much bigger later a uh, systematic mission called Kepler from NASA made a quantum step and were able to detect a lot more planets than Koro and has provided us a whole picture of the diversity of the planet. So Kepler has found, I think, 4,000 planets. They found the size, we know the size of this planet. And what Kepler has, 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 has taught us is, well, there is much more planet of the size of the Earth than of the size of Jupiter. We just count how many they are. We know also from Kepler that if there is a planet, there is a high chance there may be another one, and a third one, and a fourth one. They will come in systems. So, the transit missions has been a completely game changer here because by adding the size to the known planet for which we can get the mass, by providing a systematic survey, uh, by providing access to the multiple planetary systems, we have started to realize that there are plenty of different kind of planet different from the solar systems. Transit being sensitive to planet very close, they have found a lot of planets much, much closer than the one we have in the solar systems. By design, that's a technique sensitive with. And we have realized that actually, what practically 50% of the star, they have a planet of the size of the Earth, but extremely close. This planet 
have typically an orbit of two days, five days, 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, something much closer than Mercury. Um, that was quite a dramatic change in the perceptions of the diversity of the planet in the universe. Because 20 years ago, you would have asked anyone, he would have told you, well, all the planets should look like the solar systems. There is even some planet that some people that have predicted that nobody will detect any planet with the transit or with the Doppler spectroscopy because these techniques are very adequate, they're very sensitive to planets very close. When you go to planets like the Earth or Jupiter, they're very far. And, and, and there is a little, and there is, it's much more difficult to find them because the amplitude of the, of the, of the signal, the, the motion of the star, the impact of the shadow is much more difficult to get. Um, and this has brought up a complete new dimension here because now we are sitting on a, on a pile of thousands of exoplanets. Most of them are very different from the solar system. We, get, we know a lot of them, we know a lot of things on this planet. We know the density, we know they're rocky for some of them, we know that they are they, they kind of in between rocks and water for the other, and all this has been found thanks to these two techniques, the transit and the plus spectroscopy. Well, in the future, this will change, because what we all would like to get is a picture. And, and we do have a couple of pictures of planet, well, we do have a cup on only because it's difficult. It's difficult because the light is just shining, it's so bright. So when you want to do a picture of a planet, you have to suppress the light from the stars. And you also have to deal with a more severe problem, which is the blur of the atmosphere. We have something between us, the telescopes, and the sky, which is the atmosphere. And the atmosphere is a bit moving. So there are tricks being used, which are called adaptive optics, active optics, to correct all this, all these effects, and uh, to try to froze the picture, make it very good. And these are the way that has been used to make the very first picture of the systems. We have very few. Well, we have no, we have no, we have new, a new series of telescopes being built right now, which much bigger mirror. And with this mirror, and then the very same technique used to make picture, we hope that we will make a lot of progress. And maybe the next big discoveries of future exoplanets will not come from radio velocity or for transit, but will come from these direct imaging techniques, providing us picture of this world, and hopefully detail about the atmosphere of this planet on other stars.